Hi everyone. Um, in this uh, video, um, I'll be showing you a few of the basic um, structures and how to use um, and coding in R. Um, as um, you've seen the previous video, um, you've seen how you can start R Studio through Galaxy. This is the instance that I was running before, so it's still um, ongoing. Um, in case you are using a Galaxy instance that is not supporting um, uh, RStudio um, at this point, um, an alternative option of, uh, of running this exercise is to use the um, RStudio cloud service, um, which is a um, provided by RStudio and you can create a, a free account and, and you're going to see the exact same environment uh, that you can use to run these particular exercises. Uh, for our purposes, I will continue um, the discussion using the instance of RStudio that I've been uh, spun um, onto Galaxy. So um, if, I, uh, if I want to open the interface again, I can click on the RStudio link here, um, which will open up my, my interface. Um, this is the script that I've created in the previous video. If I open it up, you can see um, some information here. Um, but in order to have a brand new, um, brand new place to put our information, uh, I will be creating a new script. So in order to do that, you go to file, new file, and select a script, and you see now a, a new piece of information here. So um, just a few things about R, uh, in case you're not aware. R is uh, a free and open source um, programming language. It is being gained um, and it's been growing in popularity for quite some time now. Um, it's widely used and it has a broad community that continuously supports um, both the, uh, the base R as well as uh, provides a whole um, set of packages and libraries that um, extend and enhance the functionality provided by R. Um, it's quite powerful. It can run on multiple different um, uh, environments and platforms, including um, Windows, Mac OS, um, Unix, and as you can see, you can uh, several different other platforms, including Galaxy, that can run um, R Studio directly, uh, R and R Studio directly. There. So, uh, in this tutorial, I'll be talking about a few of the um, basic aspects of, of R, and um, I will um, create initially by um, talking about uh, one main thing in R, which is how to create variables. So variables basically is a, uh, a piece of information that uh, maintains a value that is useful for R to remember and to use. Um, so if we want to create um, a variable or an object, if you like, um, a variable A, uh, so I've created this a comment in order to do that, uh, you name your variable as A. Um, actually, let's make this a bit more clear by putting um, the, uh, the, 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 the bracket there. Um, so uh, we have the name, and we use the assignment operator, which is looked like an arrow, which is the um, less than symbol with a, with a dash, and, um, and the value. So if I want to run this, uh, first of all, it would be nice to save. As you can see, it's still untitled, so it's unsaved. I press Control S to um, as a shortcut, and I will name this as R Basic. And as you can see, our new script appeared down here. So if I want to run this, I can click Control Enter, and now you've seen on the console um, that the value has just um, run. Plus, um, it's, uh, it's useful to see here on the environment that you have, um, that RStudio is, is, is clever enough to tell us that, look, you have a new variable that you've defined, and this is, um, this is the particular value. So the environment um, is basically a space where we can maintain and have always a good understanding of what information is, is, is there. Um, so in, in this instance, um, we've named our variable A. So there are a few um, points uh, that may be useful to remember. So for example, uh, we should avoid spaces. So if I want to call um, a new variable, and this is, for example, we want to create a new variable here, 
Um, this is not a good name because we've added um, spaces here. And um, in order to avoid that, we tend to put um, the underscore as a way to connect those different words together as a single um, string. Um, it's also a very good practice uh, to avoid putting uh, symbols like exclamation mark or um, at or um, hashtag as, as part of a name because each of them, each of those symbols have a different functionality in R. Um, so this, um, this will create um, a problem. For example, if I put hashtag, you see that by um, the R Studio already has identified that this is a comment and it's not available as I was imagining. Um, also, we cannot start a variable with a number. So if we want to put a number, this is not going to work. You can see that already here, um, there is indication saying that you're doing something wrong. Um, so uh, this is a, a very good rule of thumb. Um, and at sometimes let's say that we want to create, um, let's create another variable, another variable. And I'm going to call this as human chromosome number, and I'm going to assign this to three. So um, there is a problem here, as you can see. And um, the interesting thing is that it gives us information that what you're doing might um, in include an error. And the problem is that, as you can see, by accident around here, I left a blank. So it's basically a text, a string here called human, then I have a second one. And the problem is that um, it starts with a symbol that it doesn't understand. As I said, it's a, a usual practice to always start with a character and um, the underscore creates an issue. So this is, by deleting the, uh, the blank here, this, this works absolutely fine. Um, so um, now that we've done that, let's create, create yet another one. Um, and I'm going to reassign this time, reassign object names, uh, reassign object names. Um, so let's say that we want to create a new variable called gene name, and I'm going to put the value of um, TT53 here. If I want to run this, um, control enter, um, you see um, that the command has been executed, and now I have a um, yet another uh, variable here. If I want to actually see the value, um, I can type gene name, and you see that it prints out um, exactly this, um, this, this content. Um, so in this case, we see how we have put the value into um, the environment and how we can retrieve it from, from that. Um, if I want um, to, for some reason, I'm, I'm done with this variable and don't need it anymore, I can um, use the function called remove rm and I can run gene name and provide gene name as, as the attribute. So um, the command has been executed and now you see in my environment that um, this does not exist anymore, um, which is also um, so if I try to access now the value of gene name, if I run this, it gives us the error that the object gene name is not found. In other words, um, this has been created and now it has been deleted. So if I try to access it again, it gives me an error, which is very well um, expected. So this is how we define uh, variables, how we assign values and how we remove them. Um, let's try to have a look into um, some of the properties um, that um, those variables have. So every object in R has um, two uh, main properties. The one is the length, which is, in other words, how many distinct values are held within this particular object. The second one is a mode. The mode is, in other words, what is the classification, what is the, the type of, of this particular object. There are several different um, types of modes. Um, the most common ones is um, the numeric, so um, these correspond to types like float, uh, integers, decimals, and so forth. There are the character ones, which is um, representing something that has a consequence of, of or sequence of letters, numbers all together. So like names, text, and so forth. And we have also the logicals, which are Boolean values like true, false, that's it. There are a few more, um, which um, I will not go into because um, they will require some additional uh, context, but 
Um, the main idea for uh, you to remember is that um, length gives us the number of values that are contained in this object, um, and mode is what is the type of, of, of information there. So let's try this out. Um, so uh, let's try, let's see, sorry, let's see mode and length. Um, length. So uh, I'm going to first define a, um, a new variable. Let's, let's call it the chromosome name. And I'm going to assign uh, the value chromosome 02. I'm going to run this. And now we see that this is um, our, uh, our, 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 our new variable. If I type mode and um, the chromosome name, you see that RCV is clever enough and it's typed um, the, by, by typing a few characters, it's identified that this is what I'm trying to do. So I, it auto filled it. Um, if I run the mode, you see that it, it's type is of, of, of character. And um, so this is, and if I type length of the chromosome name, um, you see that it actually contains only one value, which is uh, exactly what we, we uh, should expect it. So um, this is how mode and length works. Um, if you go into the uh, corresponding tutorial on the Galaxy Training Network uh, material, uh, you'll see some exercises, and I will definitely encourage you to um, try and going through, through them as well to familiarize with, you, uh, with, your, uh, with um, how mode and length actually work. And the second point um, of, uh, that might be worth um, discussing now is that beyond assigning values, we can actually do also operations between them. And one of the uh, main operations is to do mathematical operations. There, there are all, all, all the basic math operations are available in R, um, basic math operations. Uh, and these correspond to um, the values are plus, minus um, for uh, addition and subtraction. We have the asterisk for multiplication and the uh, backslash for division um, either the um, up arrow or um, double uh, or double asterisk correspond to the exponential. And there's also the um, double uh, percentage. So for example, if I have two values A and B, a double sense of B is the modulus, so the remainder of the integer division. Um, and, and this is how we can use them. So for example, let's try one. And um, as uh, in, uh, in, in math, we can use parentheses to actually prioritize um, the, uh, the application of the operations one of the other. So let's say that we want to do um, this kind of operation. Um, so in other words, uh, five in the exponent of 0 0.5, and um, the result of that add one and the whole thing divide by two. Uh, I can run this and it will give me um, a number, 1.618.0.34. Um, and um, this is um, one way of, of, of working with that, but given that we already have some, um, um, some variables, we can also use the operations like not only on numbers, but on, on variables that contain numbers. And in our environment here, we have the human chromosome number 23. So we can try um, actually um, human chromosome number um, times two. And if I run this, it will give us 46. So we, um, our um, takes the name of the variable of the object um, here. It replaces it with its content at that particular time, at execution time, which is 23, and multiplies it by two. This is operation, and this is what it, it gives us. And it gives us, it prints out the result. So this is how, um, how um, this uh, whole thing um, works. Another point um, that um, is extremely useful in, in R um, is how to, um, to use multiple values at the same time. So um, vectors are one of the most commonly used object types in R. And it's basically a collection of values uh, that importantly are of the same type. So for example, we have a vector of numbers, a vector of characters and so forth. 
So this allows us to put um, lots of pieces of information of the same type into a same object, into the same variable, so we can access them at the same time on do operations with them. So, um, so let's start working with vectors. So what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to create a new vector, vector called um, snip genes. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a um, new function called um, C, which stands for combine. And I'm going to put a few genes here. Let's say IXDR, um, ACTM3, AR, and um, OPRM1. So four genes here, if I run this, now you see here, we have a new representation. So the SNP genes object exists here. Um, and this time around, you actually see that um, it is represented a bit differently. So it tells us that, that um, the, this has a character, it has um, elements one to four, and this is um, the element. So if we have a longer vector with more, um, more, uh, more um, values in it, it will not show everything, just the first few, but it's always a good idea to have a look at what happened in our environment. Um, let's connect this to what we saw earlier and, and to see the properties of this, um, of this object. As we said, we have the mode and we have the length. So let's try mode on the SNP genes. Um, as you can see, um, again, the mode gives us what is the type of the values that are contained. Um, and um, because we've put something that is basically text, it gives us what is actually true, which is the characters. We can also use the length of snip, snip, snip genes of this new um, variable. Uh, as you might expect, the results going to give is four, which also can be seen here. So uh, both mode and length gives us the information that we expect. Um, there is another function that is extremely useful that combines basically the output of both mode and length, produce um, both this information called structure, SDR. Um, so if I try um, structure genes and run this, it basically gives us um, the same information that the mode is character, the length is one to four, so four pieces of information, and these are some of the um, of the values there. If if it was if it were a longer um, uh, variable, it's going to give us um, a few less, um, a few of the values instead of, of all of them. Uh, I think the cutoff is around 1,000 when printed out, um, but this can be um, changed if need be. Not that it is extremely useful to see 1,000 values at the same time. So um, this is how we create uh, a vector. This is how we can see its properties. But in, if we create a vector, we actually want to start working with it. Um, so a few things that we might need to do is to um, get a value from this particular vector or to subset a vector or to retrieve a range and so forth. So let's create a few more vectors of different types so that we can see how this works. So let's start with a, a new object called SNPs. Again, I'm going to use the combine and I'm going to put a few of um, SNP identifiers here. Uh, five, three, five, seven, six. Uh, let's create another one. RS one eight one five seven three nine, um, and yet another one. RS six one five two, and finally, sorry, RS one seven nine 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 seven one. So these are for um, SNP variables from, from DB SNP, basically SNP identifiers. I've pressed enter, not control enter, so it, does, it hasn't executed the, the, the command yet. So let's create also another one, um, which is SNP chromosomes. And um, the idea here is to capture the information of where this chromosome is coming from, from where this corresponding um, SNP corresponds to. So let's say chromosome three, chromosome 11, chromosome X and chromosome six. Um, and also let's put also the SNP positions, positions. Um, and this is going to be, sorry, I forgot the dash in my assignment. Again, I'm going to use the combine 
And this time around, I'm going to create only um, values, uh, which are going to be seven, six, two, six, eight, five, um, six, six, five, six, zero, six, twenty four, six, seven, five, four, five, seven, eight, five, and one, four, four, zero. Three nine six six two. Um, so in this case, we have created this. We have defined those three um, variables here. We haven't run them yet, so that's why we don't see them in the environment. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight them, and I click on Run, which will run all those um, commands at the same time. So now you can see um, that I have um, four vectors here: the one that we created before, the SNF genes, and now we have our SNF chromosomes positions um, and, and, and snips. And you can see that with the exception of position, which is numeric, because we've literally put numbers there, all of them are, are character ones. So now that we have them, um, let's say that we want to access a value from, from those ones. Let's say that we want to access the third value of, 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 the, of the SNP genes vector. So to do that, I'm going to specify SNP genes, and I'm going to use the square bracket and I'm going to put um, the index that I'm looking for. So in this case, we want to look for um, the gene in position three. So if I type that, you see that that's AR. Bear in mind, um, and this is a, a, a important point, and um, that in R, uh, indexes um, start uh, on in one. Um, so here, as you can see, AOXTR is one, ACTN3 is two, and AR is three. And that's why when I execute this, um, this and retrieve the third element, it gives me AR. Um, so in, uh, in addition to retrieving just a single um, um, element, I can actually retrieve multiple ones. And I can do, for example, um, a range. Let's say that we want to retrieve all values from um, one to three. So what I can do is one, um, two dot three. And if I run this, it will give me a subset, but retrieving only values one, two, and three, as you can see, um, the same is, is here. Um, if I don't want these values to be um, sequential, I can use the same approach, but instead of, 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 of specifying a range directly, I can use the C to combine specific indexes. So for example, I want value position one, three, and four. So with this um, command, what I will have, um, and I'm going to run this here, it will give me the first value, the third value, and the fourth value as, 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 a, new, um, as a new element. I can also uh, combine these two representations. Um, so for example, I can do um, snip genes, and I can put here that I want the elements of um, one to three and also four. So in this case, what I will actually do is I'm creating here a vector of elements one, two, and three. And in this element, I also add the fourth one. So if I run this, it will, uh, uh, okay, as you can see, I did a typo. So it gave me that uh, the SPN genes is not found because I spelled this the other way around. So I'm going to change this to SNP genes. And if I run this, um, it'll give me an incorrect number of dimensions um, because I'm trying to access the fourth element outside of, of this one. So what I was, I was expected to do is not have the parentheses here, but basically here, because I want to combine this vector, one to three, plus four. Again, because this is a quite common mistake. Um, if I want to access all these elements, instead of, so this particular case, I'm trying to access multiple dimensions, basically. So instead of um, saying that I want to combine the vector of elements 1.3 and four, I said I want to access two different uh, directions. So I'm going to change this one back to the original one. I'm going to rerun this, and it would give me essentially my original uh, original vector. 
So um, this is how we can access elements or um, subsets of the elements uh, of in, in a vector. But the question is, um, what happens if we want to add new elements in the vector? So let's say that in the snip genes um, uh, vector, I want to add more. This is what we actually did here. Um, as you can see, we had a vector of elements one, two, and three, and we extended this vector to add element four. In this context, um, I can say that I want to combine the existing SNP, uh, SNP genes um, uh, vector, but I'm going to add a few more um, genes. So CP1A1A1. A1. And um, let's add also a P O A five. So if I run this, it will give me a new vector of this one, two, three, four, five, six elements because we had four already in SNP genes, um, and we add two more. However, bear in mind that if I want to print uh, the content of SNP genes, and if I don't run it again my original four elements are still there. So I've added them, but I did not save it back to my variable. So in order to do that, I have to overwrite my original variable, so snip genes, with the output that is produced by this particular command. So again, I'm combining the contents of the snip genes vector to um, this additional two elements. If I run this now, it doesn't print anything, but now we see here that SNP genes actually is a range of six, and I have additional values here. So we have the four original plus the two I've just added. So please keep this in mind that you are essentially changing our original vector. So this is a process that um, um, should be um, done if if you are actually aware that you are actually exchanging your original data, you are, you are updating it. So you're adding new elements to your vector. Um, so as you can see, by um, using these positive indexes, I can um, add access, access elements in, into, a, into, a, a, into a vector. So let's say that we want to do um, the opposite thing. Let's say that we want, don't want to add elements to the vector, we want to, to, to remove them. Uh, in order to do that, we use negative values. So I'm going to do snip genes again, but I'm going to put minus six. If I run this, um, it will give me um, it will um, give me the result of of um, we'll see that it will give us a um, uh, sorry, it, um, the interface froze for a bit there. Um, so if we run this, you'll see that um, from, uh, from the original um, uh, vector that contained six elements, A, C, T, N, and up until A, P, O, A, five, the sixth element, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is this one, is now removed. So by indicating with a minus six in the same square brackets, um, we've removed this particular uh, value from, from, from this point. So let's say that um, we want to save this change. In the same process that we did before, I'm going to use snip genes and I'm going to override my original value by specifying binary six. So if I run this, and I can check now that um, my, uh, my vector has changed from a, from a length of six to a length of, of five. Um, another interesting point um, that is um, something that you should be aware of is that um, you can always explicitly add a, a value to a specific position. And we use this with, um, with, um, with um, the, the double brackets. So, for example, I can say that I want to add in SNP genes in position seven um, the, um, the element called um, APOA5. So, if I run this, 
um, it works. And now you see that my element has seven. So from five, it moved to seven. Let's have a look in how actually this looks like. I'm printing here. And as you can see, the original five elements are still here up until CYP1A1. Then we have something called NA. And then we have the one that we just defined. So what happened is that because we explicitly asked R to add this element in position seven, it created a not a number, a, a missing value for position six. And then it added the element in, in, in position five. So this might be a good or a not so good thing, depending on what you're trying to do, but some to be absolutely aware at any, uh, at any, particular, um, at any particular time. Um, so what we've seen so far um, in, uh, with vectors, um, this is how we can create a vector by saying combine and we put the elements that we want there. We can do this for uh, numericals like this one. Uh, if we want to access a particular element, we, we, we position, uh, we request the particular value by uh, its index number, uh, index is start in one. Um, we can create a range like this one or a combination of ranges like this one. Um, and if we want to remove an element, we use the negative index. So we want to remove the element in position six um, and we can add an element in a particular position by uh, the double brackets, as you've seen here. Another way of extracting information of subsetting is to use logical subsetting. So let's say that we want to um, use the positions which are numerics. And what I want to do now is I want to, um, to retrieve, so I can put like an index here. Let's, so uh, give me the position that is in position three, control enter, it gives me the, the, the correct uh, value. But let's say that I want to actually retrieve information that exists um, and I want to retrieve all values um, that are greater than, let's say, one million. Um, or what the number is this? So it's, uh, it's 10 million or 100 million. 10 million, 100, 100 million, sorry. So um, over greater than 100 million. So it actually gives me a single element because if we look in our original table, um, the only value that is big enough is, is the fourth one. So I can use this kind of, of, of a logical operation to retrieve information from here. Um, just to provide the context, so the logical operations, um, they are less than, less or equal, greater than, greater or equal. This is the exactly equal to, so it's double, double equal symbol, not a single equal. Please be aware of that. This is one of the common mistakes. The not equal is exclamation point and an equal. And then we have the logical or, which is the vertical line, or the logical and, which is the, um, the, the and symbol. Um, so it is good to, um, to keep this in mind. So how did this function actually work? Um, and this is a, 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 a nice um, structure to have in mind. So here, um, this is a vector, right? So let me copy this command right here. So what I, I've put here as index is basically the um, application of a, of a logical operation on a vector, the number. So if I run this by itself, you see that what it produces is a logical vector. A vector said false, 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 true. Basically, it applies this operation to each individual element of my original uh, vector. So it, uh, it checks whether this value, the first value is greater than 10 million, the second greater than 10 million and so forth. And depending on the outcome um, of, this, of this operation, it gives us the value of false or true. And because of that, the only true value is for the, um, for the last element, the fourth one. So what happened here is basically a, a function where we said, um, okay, so I want you to give me all the positions for which the original index, um, the original value is greater than 10 million. So it creates a logical value and gives us 
only the indexes for which the original uh, operation gave us true. So if we want to, so this answers the questions, the question, um, what are the positions that are greater than um, 10 million? But I can also ask the question, okay, what is the index of those? So I might be interested to know which is this particular position. So in order to do that, I actually use a function called which, and I can pay, I can put the exact same operation here. So which index or which indices of my original vector have values that are greater than 10 million. And you can see here that it's, 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 it's four. So why this is important? And why do I stress this a bit more? Uh, because in, um, when we, we, we program and we create a, a sort of a structure, we might not always know um, what are the inputs or what are the values basically that are um, going to be used when, when, when running our code. So instead of using a predetermined value like 10 million that I put here, we can use sort of, of, um, of, of parameters, of, of variables as parameters that will define that. So in this case, I can say that I want to have a snip marker cutoff, marker cutoff, that is going to have the value of 10 million. I'm going to copy it directly here. And I'm going to run this. So you can see that we have a new value here, a new variable. And then what I'm going to say is that um, I want to give, I want you to give me the SNP positions for which the SNP positions are actually greater than the SNP, sorry, marker cutoff. So I don't need to keep, so if I run this, it will give me the exact same value. So if I do this, um, I won't need to change this particular value at every particular point in my code, but just do it once in line 79 in this instance. And from here onward, I will only refer to it by using the corresponding variable called SNP marker cutoff. Um, so another point um, in order to, to close with, um, with, uh, with the vectors is to um, have a, a good understanding of um, how we can investigate whether we have missing values or not. So in order to do that, there is a value called, a function called is an A. So it, 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 it in requires whatever you give us input. So for example, SNP genes, um, whether you have any non, um, no, not any missing values in there. As you can see, if I run this, the output is false, 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 true, false. If you remember, uh, because we inserted a new gene on, on, on position seven, the sixth position was an NA. So by using the is NA, we can get this, um, this kind of, of information back. Um, so this is a, a good tip to remember. As another point is that we might have a case where we want to retrieve specific values by a name. Um, in order to do that, <clears throat> we can use another operation that's called in. So it's um, typed as percentage in percentage. So let's say that we want to retrieve from the SNP genes all um, to check basically um, if these particular two genes uh, are present there or not. APOA5 and SNP genes. So if I run this, it will give me true, true. If I put also, uh, let's say TP53 and I run this, it will give me true, true, false because it will give me true only for the first two. For the last one, it will say, okay, I cannot find this one in SNP genes. So this is a function. This is an operation in which it checks every element of my original vector against the elements in SNP genes and checks whether this one is in um, my final uh, vector. Continue on with um, the vectors. Um, if you go again to the training material, you're going to see that there are a few exercises there. I will definitely encourage you to have a uh, better look and see um, if you can, you can try them out and you can um, have some better understanding of how markers, um, how, sorry, vectors work. A, um, I'm going to continue with another key point in, um, in, in R, which is about coercion values. So um, coercion values is 
in some cases, um, requesting from R to change the type of a data in a, in a vector to a different type. Um, for example, uh, we might have a list that has um, the, um, uh, the position of, of a SNP, uh, but by uh, some accident, um, some text was thrown in there. Uh, for this reason, everything is going to be changed to, to, a, um, to an actual character. So um, let's see about um, how those things work first, and then I'm going to try to show you how we can change the types between different um, vectors. So um, if you remember, we have the chromosomes. So let's um, check again the SNP chromosomes. Uh, if I run this, we have 3, 11, X, and 6. So if I try to check the mode of the um, SNP chromosomes, we'll see that it's type of, of character, right? Um, and this has been done because if I scroll a bit up and we check the chromosomes, I explicitly stated them as characters. I put the um, quotation marks uh, before and after. Let's create a second um, um, uh, variable. Let's call it chromos chromosomes, chromosomes two, underscore two. Um, but this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, I'm not going to change them as, um, as numbers. I'm going to say that we have three, um, 11, X is actually a number, so I'm going, uh, as, as a symbol, so I'm going to put it in quotation marks, and we have six. So hey, here, I have a mix of numbers and strings. If I run this, you see that it actually worked absolutely fine. But let's check what is the mode. So mode of the chromosomes to, if I run this, it's still a character. So um, what happened? So the problem is that um, because the vector has to have a single type of information there, um, I need to be, um, I need to, uh, R needs to transform all the contents to the largest common type. In other words, um, it tries to change all of these values into a single type whatever is the um, most difficult to, um, to store in that sense. Um, 3, 11, and 6 are numbers, so they are easily converted to a text um, by saying that this is the symbol 3 instead of the actual number 3. So in order to have this all as a single type, because x is not easy to change into a number because r does not know what the number x corresponds to, um, it changes everything into a um, into a into a um, and now a, into a character. This is a question, so it it it's, it's automatically changes um, uh, the type of the values into the largest common type. Um, however, we can force R to change, if possible, from one type to another, but we have to be explicit about this. So let's create, um, I'm going to copy the positions from here, but this time around, I'm going to save it into a different um, variable called positions two. And instead of having them as numbers, I'm going to put everything in quotation marks. So instead of dealing with them as strings, as, as characters, I'm going, to, as, sorry, as numbers, I'm going to deal with them as characters. If I run this, uh, we see this here, you can see that it's, it's characters. If I put mode positions two, I can verify that it's in the character. And um, I can also try access one of the element, positions two element one, and it gives me the first one as an actual character. So, um, however, this is not really a very convenient way of dealing with that because we already see and we are aware because we put the data there that all of this should be numbers. So this is where the question comes in. And we say that we want to change positions two by using the S, S dot, and now it will, uh, we can select a, a type. 
So we want to convert um, positions two from a character perspective into a number. So this is done by us explicitly, and we've requested, um, sorry, let's see now the mode again, positions two, and now you see that it's been converted to numbers. And if I check this here, you can see indeed that it is numbers and all of them are considered as numbers. So um, this is a bit straightforward because we've converted um, positions. Um, this, th these are all characters that are basically numbers. Um, so it was not difficult to do. However, let's try to do the same thing, but for chromosomes. Let's try to convert Chromosomes 2 as numeric, and I'm going to chromosome 2 again. So as a reminder, we have numbers here, 3, 11, and 6, but we also have something that is not easy to convert to a number. We don't, cannot think of how. So if I run this, it actually executes fine, but you see that R put out a warning, which says that because you coerced you explicitly asked me to change the type of the values from strings, from characters to numbers. I've done as best as I could, but some that I could not, I've changed them to NAs. So in other words, if, I, if, we, if we check, first of all, our, the type of, of um, the mode of our um, vector, it's, it's numeric, but if we want to check it out and run it, you can see that we actually have numbers 3, 11, 6, but you also have a missing value. So it works, but at a cost. This again might be a good or a bad thing, but it's something to always be aware of. So if I want to summarize this a bit before we move on to the next um, to, to, to lists and talk about this a lot, a bit, um, it's always important to be careful when um, and, and to check the result when explicitly coercing one data type into another. Um, it is uh, the implicit coercion, the implicit change is happening like here by R. And this is a safe conversion because no loss of information is actually happening. Um, it's always a good plan to use the structure of, um, of, uh, of a um, chromosomes. Uh, to use this, the function of a structure for a particular um, variable before using them and before we apply the conversions, just so we are always aware of, of, of how it's done. Uh, the implicit coercion, again, it's fairly safe, but because um, this have, may have been a vector of 10,000 numbers and one character, if looking briefly through the data, you might have the um, misconception that this will indeed be a number, but because there was by accident a character in there somehow, R will implicitly coerce everything to a character. So checking right after loading or right after creating a vector, what is the actual structure will help you easily identify um, such issues. The final point to keep in mind is um, another type of structures that R provides, which are called lists. So as opposed to, um, to lists, to, to vectors, lists are able to contain multiple different data types. Um, and um, this is extremely useful because it allows us to store multiple pieces of information at the same time. And um, if you look through the um, Galaxy Train Network tutorial, and you'll see a few links with additional tutorials about lists. But one of the easiest um, ways to convey how this works, let's say that we want to combine all the pieces of data that we have so far, and let's call it snip data, by adding them into a list. So to be more um, clear on what is happening here, I'm going to split into multiple lines. So um, all of this is within the list function. And I'm going to say that I'm going to have a column in my list called genes. And this one will contain the SNP genes, comma. I'm going to have the reference SNPs, the column called reference SNP. Uh, and these are going to be my SNPs. 
Um, let me check. I have uh, snips. There it is. Um, just making sure that everything is in place. Um, we want to have also the chromosome. Chromosome. And this is going to take information from SNP chromosomes. And finally, uh, we also want to have the position. Um, and this one is going to be the SNP positions. So by doing that, I'm going to highlight and run everything. And now you see that we have a different type of, of data here. So our study, in order to have them um, um, visually seen, um, it provides this information into a different section called data. And as opposed to values, which are all of the same type, um, a, a data type, a, a list in this case, can have multiple different types. So you can see that we have uh, chromosome vectors, a chromosome vector, a character vector, a character vector, a character vector, and a numeric vector. And um, we can retrieve information directly. So if I want to have um, to access the steep data, I can use the dollar sign. And I can say, OK, give me the position. So by using that, it gives me um, the list of, of elements um, there. Uh, in the same sense, I can use, um, in the same sense of in the vectors, I can access uh, the vector position, sorry, it is a vector position, and um, give me the element in, in, in position two, for example. And if I run this, it will give me the second um, element in, in my position list. So um, accessing a, um, a, a contents of a list is done using the dollar sign. Uh, as soon as we get into a list, we actually have vectors now, so we can apply exactly the same process we've seen before. So in other words, lists are um, quite elegant ways of combining information at the same time um, so that we have them compacted into a single entity that can be accessed at any point. I'm going to save this so that we have the script ready for um, the, uh, the next video. Um, I will, uh, again, definitely encourage you to go through the tutorial on the Galaxy Training Network. There are a few exercises and additional links there. And um, I hope you found this useful. Um, and bye.